Hello friends, this is the seventh lecture on Alexander Pope's and essay on criticism. I think we have covered now part one, now this is part two. We have seen six points altogether. Uh, why do why do critics make wrong judgments? We saw pride is one. Second, we saw little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And third is people going after minor faults. They miss the important point, that is beauty of the whole. And fourth is some people go after conceits and bombastic words and glittering, uh, glittering words. And fifth we saw uh, some other critics, they are interested in sounds only, rhyming, isn't it? And sixth we saw art is not a chance, art is craft. Now today we have the seventh point, the seventh is, is that avoid extremes. So critics should avoid extremes. What does that mean, extremes? Avoid extremes. So one of the reasons for wrong judgment is that you are taking, you are accepting extremes. I mean, this for example, some people, you know, some people, however you do, you cannot please them. Whatever the best to give, you hand over how much Iliad, but they are not pleased. So that is one extreme. Then there are some other critics are there, they read only four lines. So if you say <coughs> uh, that famous lines we always quote, no? That is, uh, was this the face that launched a thousand ships and so on? For them it is in a book, it is wonderful. <laughs> that is the thing. So that is extreme. Well, a type of people, a type of critics are there, whatever you do, they are not pleased. You cannot please them. Then another type you can see, they are very pleased. With the very, very little work, they are very pleased. So he says, that is not good. That is not good. So you should take a middle course. But to start in media, Aristotle says, no. that is, neither too long, too big or too small. That way. Then he said, do not take offense at every fault. There are some people, you know, ah, this is a, this is a spelling mistake. There is a, <clears throat> when a comma is missing. This, this, there should have been a semicolon here. Or the full stop is missing. So such a very silly things. And that he says, it's because such people are very proud. They are very proud. And they have little sense. They have no sense. That's why they are minor and simple things, you know. They are uh, every fault they will find out. If the tea does not have a cut, then they will say, ah, this is not a tea. You cannot accept this as a tea. Like this. Then, oh, the small eye does not have a, uh, does not have the dot over it. Then they say, ah, this is cannot be accepted as an eye. Like this. So my inner things. In that. And that's, that's what they say. That, that is, Pope says that such people are proud. And they have no sense. Understand? Now, that is, he compares to a stomach where nothing can hold. Nothing can digest the stomach. Whatever he put in, ice cream, butter, or what, what else? <laughs> or uh, bitter gourd, or uh, chicken fry, or whatever, whatever he put in, say, it will love it. That's what he says. Or small chips. Snacks, the stomach cannot digest anything. Because it is always nauseating. So the mind of a, a critic who, who is out to find fault with the small little things is exactly like the stomach of a person which cannot digest anything or which is always nauseating means a omitting feeling, feeling of omitting. Whatever you give, uh, <laughs> cannot appreciate it. At the same time, he says, don't be uh, overwhelmed by a gate turn. A gate turn, gate turn means, uh, don't, you say, you say something could be immediately, you are, oh, this is wonderful. Don't say that also. Fools are men, that's what he says. But men of sense are poor. See the difference. Fools will just say, oh, what a wonderful thing it is. But men of sense will, will approve, ah, okay, this is good. Ah, this is, comparatively, this is good. 
as a Milton's Paradise Lost compared to compared to uh, Homer's Iliad. Is that okay? Because both treat uh, different themes. It's okay. So when you uh, uh, look through mist, he says, Pope says, when you look through mist, you know, you see everything is big and large. Like this, when the dull mind looks at things, he, it appears to be big and large. Understand? A dull mind. So the dull, the mind of a dull person is just like a foggy morning. Mist. If you look through mist, even the rising sun will, you will, it will appear as a big body. Because you are not seeing things clearly. Like that, the mind of a dull person, whatever he sees, he, whatever he looks at, he thinks that is big. And so he goes on at Mary. See that? So the point here, I think, once again, I will just sum up. I say, don't be extremes. So some, there are some people who can, you cannot please them. There are some people who are always pleased. See? And don't go after minor faults. If you do that, it will be like your stomach, nauseating stomach. It cannot digest anything. And so if you are a sensible person, you approve. If you are a dull person, you admire. And a dull mind, dull person, a dull wit, then he sees everything big and large, wonder. But it is just like looking at the thing through mist. I think that is clear. Now the next eighth point is there are some people and uh, the point he says is that don't don't despise despise the ancients. Now <clears throat> this is the point but he says that there are some people who are very much interested in praising only part. See there are some uh, foreign writers, some of our own popes says, what do they do? They despise the ancient soul. Some people, they despise the modern soul. That is not that. Some people, some critics, they despise the ancients. They are only that. Then all the others are good. Some critics will say, moderns are not good. The ancients are good. No, but this is, this is taking a partial view, it's not true. It is, it is like a, like the religious people, you know. They say, our faith is, our faith is something extraordinary. Our faith is something extraordinary means what? The Catholics will say, our sister will religion. The Protestants also, the Protestants, so they will say, the Protestants are all damned. The Protestants will say, our sister will religion. And so all the Catholics will be damned. It is like this. Is that? In, even in faith, the groups, they fight each other. I just take, I took the example of Protestants and, uh, and Catholics because it's easy to show you. All the other faiths are like this. Any religion survives by excluding the other religion. Isn't it? Take any religion. There, there, one religion survives by excluding all the other religions. So there is such a thing. Others, they say, others are damned. See? And they will pray like this. Oh God, bless us. Oh God, curse them. <laughs> That's what they <laughs> Isn't it? Right? Yeah. So ask God only to bless their group. It is like, he says, forcing the sun shine only on the, on the people in the south, or forcing the sun to shine only on people in the north. Northern climes, he says. But if you read through uh, books of wisdom, you will find that God, God shines and showers both on the sinners and the saints. For God, he has no such discrimination. Oh, they are sinners, so there shall be no rain. No. God's grace 
falls on everybody without any hindrance. The love of God flows freely. The love of God flows freely on Jews as well as the heathens, the Christians and the non-Christians, the savages and the civilized, the white people and the dark people, the yellow people and the brown people. So God is like that. God cannot shine or bless a particular group. He can never do that. So like that. Sun also. So he says it is like some people they say, oh, ancient Solomon. All the modern Sarput. Then others say, all the modern Sarput, ancient Sarput. This is part. There should be no partiality. A good judge should never show any partiality. And it's forcing no, the sun to shine like this. It's not possible. So the <clears throat> on the other hand, you know, the sun shines, shun, the sun has been shining from ages past till now, without any discrimination, enlightens the present and warms the past. Right? Yes. The point is that sometimes, some areas, there will be increases, improvements. Some places, in some areas, there may be decay. All the time, the ancients, you cannot say they are perfect. All the time, the moderns, you cannot say they are perfect. See that? Sometimes the ancients you will find decay among them. Sometimes you will find decay among the, among the moderns. So what? Therefore he says, don't blame the false. Don't blame, sorry, don't blame discriminately. That is, either in the south or north or ancient or but, <coughs> but, Blame the false, that you can, whether it is north or south, whether it is <coughs> ancient or modern, and value still the true. That's what it is. So don't say this ancient, don't blame ancients alone, don't blame moderns alone, but blame the false, and then value the true. Understand? So that is the point now. Don't despise the ancients, means don't despise the, uh, the, the Moderns also, don't be partial. See, the sun cannot be partial. Like that, the critics should not show any partiality. <coughs> but what the duty or the, what is the duty of the critic? The critic should blame the false and also uphold and praise the truth. See that. Listen. And then he says there are ninth point is some critics they swim with the current. Swim with the currents. That means they have no opinion of their own. They have no judgment of their own. See, they never advance a judgment of their own. Otherwise, then what will they do? They're spreading the notion of the town. Ah, the town, they have this opinion. I saw I will also do Understand? Then it says, jealous, they are jealous people. And they conclude by precedence. See that? So they cannot uh, have their own opinion. But uh, according to this, <laughs> this uh, quotation, no, when you are uh, answering questions in the examination, you say, according to so much. Now these days, the examiners, you know, they are not want to know what according to such, but what you have to say. Understand? If you have ten quotations, I think you will get 10 minus mark. You understand? Have you got anything to say? That is the, that is the example of us. Listen. And he says, uh, some people, they judge by name, not work. Oh, they say, oh, oh, this is written by so and so. Then it will be good. They don't want to see the work at all. Only the name. So they are a servile herd. They are people who are like servants. The worst is one at the great man's board, he says. The person, the worst critic is the one who enjoys the patronage of an important person. What is the problem with that? Whatever the 
this VAP or the important person writes, that critic will approve. Whether it is sense or nonsense, whether it has nothing in it, but still, they say, oh, this is my master's voice, and therefore it is, is an his master's voice. So that is the worst thing that is this. If you are a member of the gentleman's board, gentleman's board, there means a nobleman's patronage, if you have, what will happen is that you will always, he may be hacking his son with you. He may not know how to write the sonnet. But he will say, oh, his, this is bright. And the style is, the style is brightening. All idea, loaded with thought, food for thought, he will say. Before his sacred name, Bob says, flies every fault. Who is this sacred name? The name of the patron. The patron writes anything. He may write a notice, then he will say this is a novel or a short story. Understand that? Because he is enjoying the patronage of this person. And therefore, Pope says, before his name, sacred name flies every fault. And each exalted stanza teems with the thought. His stanzas teems with thought. And there are no faults. Wrong judgment. Isn't it? So that is the ninth boy. The Simbita current, opinion of the town, they are jealous people, they don't have their own opinion, they don't have anything to say about a work of art. As their own, the worst people are those who are who enjoy the patronage of a lord or a nobleman, even if the Lord of the nobleman is the worst guy. Does not know anything. A hackney sonnet here. Does not know how to write a sonnet. Does not know how to hold a pen. But still, all the faults will fly, and uh, the stanzas teems with the stanzas or the lines steep teems with the uh, thought. This so, is. There are others who just by the name of a bird, as a. Oh, this is written by Bacon. Oh, then it will be shown. Bacon may be, Bacon is a great writer. That's okay, but still, don't be blind. That's what it says. Don't be blind adorers or worshippers of people. Enjoy patronage, but don't be his slave. No, don't be a servile people. The, the judgments, those who make judgments should not become servile. That's right. And then the tenth point is, is that there are some critics who are fickle. Fickle, not pickle, but the fickle. Means always change. Evening they will praise one, blame one. Morning they will praise one. Understand? Some, some praise at morning, but they blame at night. That's what they do. They, they in the morning they will get, oh, that was it. And at the night, they, they blame, blame the same thing. Then they will say, the last opinion is right. After what else we can change? We cannot change your hand or fingers, but we can only change your opinion. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what you know, in the Bible there is, a uh, Bible, the quotation has been taken by Bacon of truth. Famous essay of truth, no? There, Bacon says, What is truth? said Pilate and did not wait for an answer. Oh. What a wonderful sentence is that. What is truth? said Pilate and did not wait for an answer. What does that mean? It's not truth. And our, the, the age that we live in is called post truth age. Post truth. So that's it. Blame at night, praise him. The last opinion is right to And then he says, the, it is, he says, like a, the muse, they are using the muse like a mistress. Like using a mistress. A concubine, a mistress. Is that? They will idolize and then they will abuse. Muse, muse means the 
Muse of Fine Arts, Go Goddesses, Gods and Goddesses of Arts and the Literacy. So Muse, so they misuse the Muse by changing their opinion like this. Understand? And there is a, their heads are big. They have no sense. They are, they are my heads are like unfortified towns. What is unfortified town? There's protection. There's no protection. Anybody can do it. Sense and nonsense daily change. See that? Then how can you expect a correct judgment from a critic? See the, what are we discussing? We are discussing the points. Why do critics go wrong? This is reason. They will say, when they change their opinion, they will say, we are wiser today. <coughs> Tomorrow will be still wiser. See, our fathers are fools. <laughs> Those people who judge and who went before us, they are fools. Our sons will say about us the same thing. We are fools. Our sons will say in future. See, our wiser sons will say like this. And that is it. This is not only you will find in literature, but you will find in, in matters of divinity. There are two opposing factions now. Scotists and the Thomists. Thomists means the great theologian, Thomas Aquinas. Scotists is the followers of Dan Scotus. He was also a scholar. But there was such a fierce quarrel a dispute between Thomas and But now, nobody goes through those disputes. Those books are in the Duck Lane. Duck Lane is a place near Smithfield where old books are sold. And it is shrouded in cobwebs. Nobody is interested in them. So what does that mean? These critics say that the ancients, opinions of ancients, even in divinity is different now. Change it. Even in divinity, divine matters change. How then why can't we change in literary matters that they have? <laughs> why can't we do it? In faith, if faith, if faith itself has different dress, dresses worn, that is our belief, belief, our belief system changes. Then what wonder is there our literary opinions change? It's no wonder. They, those people who support this thing, they will say. But at the same time, Pope says, you look at what is natural and fit. See that? Don't always think that the current, what you are thinking, or a person, uh, is, what, what the opinion of, your opinion or a group of critics of opinion is folly. Don't say like that. But you have, you have to prove it by reading it. And then at last, Pope prays that these, these others think their reputation safe. These others think their reputation safe. Why? As long as these fools are pleased to laugh. Such a fickle minded fools, as long as they laugh about the changes that they are bringing about in their opinions, and they laugh about it. They, they are fools. So the reputation of the others are safe. As when they are laughing and enjoying and they will forget about this. That is what Pope implies, I think. Understand? So today we have got four points we have discussed. First is avoid extremes. That means some people are pleased with the small things. Some people are never pleased with anything, even big things. The big things and small things means work of art, very um, excellence. No? You cannot please a person even you are so excellent, but another person you can do without any difficulty. Understand? And therefore he says, such people are very proud and uh, you should, uh, should not be like this. Uh, you should uh, uh, approve, not just admire. At any gate and you should not be taken up with the uh, uh, feelings and uh, uh, he says do not take offense at every fault if you take offense at every fault your mind will be like the a stomach that is always nauseating so you won't reach anywhere 
Then he says, next is don't despise ancients. Part like this, like the sun shines, you should shine on everybody. Uh, try to find out which is the correct one or the right one. Uh, blame the false and approve the true. And swim with the current. Some people or towns, opinion of the town. In the morning they, night they blame and morning they praise. They say that what is there? There's nothing wrong in this. Our last opinion is the right opinion. Then he said they quote the example of Thomas and Scottish. They quarrelled over even divine matters. Then why can't we quarrel over over this? Um, uh, uh, now that is uh, sorry, swim with the current. Swim with the current. Town. Uh, sorry, town. That is not that point. They they are survived people. They don't uh, have their own opinion. What the town says, they will also say. Then especially you have to be afraid of those people who are. Uh, enjoying patronage because when the patron writes anything, they, all the faults will disappear and they will say that it is good for them. And the last is fickle painter, the change, you know, changing. Morning, uh, night they will blame, morning they will uh, praise, then they say that our fathers were fools and the, our sons will uh, consider us also fools. Then say there are disputes even in divine matters, Thomas and Scottish, then why can't we think of a situation where there are disputes in literary matters. See that? Uh, and then Pope consoles himself by saying that as long as these fools laugh, the reputation of the good others, uh, great others will remain safe. Listen. So we have come up to 10 points. So a quick review of all this. First, you remember pride is very important, little knowledge. And then he says, don't go after minor faults. And they say some people go after conceits and bombas, some people go after only rhyming and sound, sounding, sound and then art is uh, chance, art is craft and not chance. And uh, they say you know, those who learn dance can move easily. Then avoid extremes, that is, you should not, do not take offense. Do not take offense at small things, then if you are strong, you are, that, that will be like a no seating stomach. Don't despise the ancients only or moderns only. What we should do, take a balanced view. Don't force the sun to shine only on the southern climes or northern climes. You approve what is true and blame what is what is uh, false. And then you assume with the current town's opinion that you should not do, especially when you have uh, you have, you have a patron. You are connected to a patron, then you are bound to be a fool. Fickle, that means don't change your opinions, you must have your own opinion. Uh, don't say that uh, uh, today, before going to bed, you praise next morning, get up and say that is uh, false and things like that. Don't do, but what you, we should do is that uh, like you should uh, be about, uh, have a balanced mind, you should have your own opinion. That's what he says. So these are the 10 reasons. Now we have got four more reasons that we will do tomorrow. Okay? I think you are following me and uh, enjoying these classes. Have a nice day. Enjoy your life. Bye.